We so, had, uh, Dan had the day off, so we we are we are moving to a new home. Oh, really I'm good. So he's been packing like crazy. Yeah, I'm going to be doing that next month. Yay! He's just been driving Peggy insane because one, Peggy loves boxes. <laughs> so. At any given time in our house, we have like eight to 10 cardboard boxes just sitting around for Peggy to jump in because it brings her joy. <laughs> I know it, it, our house looks like a trash heap because of these cats, but you know, well, she's very upset because Dan has been taking all of her boxes and filling them with things and then sealing them with tape. And the things are not her. No. So she's very upset. Like she keeps on like going and checking out all these closed boxes and she's super offended about it. She trying to claw her way into any of them or yes. <laughs> Meanwhile, Dottie, my little scaredy cat just doesn't like that things are happening and there's noise. So she's just like been like living in the bedroom. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Gr Grady, you want to be on the screen? No, you don't. I'm pretty sure Grady is going to be having that experience very soon. At least. And I have to travel 1500 miles with you so that's yeah we fun. only we only got a we're only moving like 45 minutes and even then i'm sure peggy will sing me the song of her people because she does not like to be in the car so we're but. gonna have a special experience aren't we grady ah boy you poor bastard all right this week we drove across we drove to missouri with miracle last year and she was pretty okay she slept in my lap most of the time yeah, but miracle was but miracle was little kitty gives no fucks like grady is anxiety ball yeah. Well, so uh, this week, have you noticed it's even though we've had some crazy shit in the past few weeks, it's been kind of chill. In it has. Weeks. That's changed this week. Oh, boy. It's sort of there was a, an avalanche. Well, you know, there had to have been some ridiculous Valentine shenanigans of some dude just totally no. fucking it up. No. There wasn't, which, really? or if there was, it kind of got overshadowed by all the rest. You're going to see. Always, there's always some psycho that like murders somebody on Valentine's Day to leave the corpse on a girl's porch as tribute or some shit. Look, if I had a nickel for every guy that left a dead person on my step to try and court me, whew, like I could retire. You don't even want to know how many people Dan had to disappear to get me to marry him. You realize this is all being recorded. Broadcast live over. The, this this constitutes admissible evidence. I'm just saying. True. I didn't say any of that. That should cover it, right? It's the Trump era. You can pretend you didn't say shit and everyone will accept it. Exactly. I'll just be like, fake news. All right. Let's get started. Each week, Catherine, pretty dead air audience, go out worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring back here from the segment we like to call, what the fuck? You know what we haven't had in a good long while? Crazy. Meat Straight. down the pants? I'm crazy well, yeah, no, we, we haven't had meat down the pants. We've had down the pants. We had the guitar down the pants. On the True. Pants, but we haven't had some fantastically naked crazy. That's true. We haven't. And this guy, boy, did he just, it's like challenge accepted. He, 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 boy got game. I'll tell you. He did not just, he went, he went ham on this shit is, is all I can say. Because, wow. Man. Naked man breaches security at Department of Homeland Security, NBC, in Northwest Washington, D.C. An American University student ran naked down Nebraska Avenue, jumped fences into the Department of Homeland Security campus. Wow. And onto NBC4's campus Saturday night. I thought that was going somewhere else. I didn't know this until I, 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 I married my husband. NBC in the military stands for nuclear, nuclear biological chemical. chemical. Because that he was an NBC specialist. Yeah. 
So I was thinking Department of Homeland Security, like NBC facility. I was like, that's not a place you want to be naked. No, no. It was actually the NBC but affiliate. NBC TV is a different thing. Okay. I thought this was going to be much worse. Like we had the Toxic Avenger on our hands, but. Mark Baker, 20, overpowered an NBC security guard and gained access to the building where he attacked and bit an NBC employee who intervened to restrain him. He bit Kenneth the page? <laughs> Dude, that's not okay. <laughs> now, Kenneth's in New York. This is DC. Kenneth's fine. Kenneth's All right. Fine. Uh, he was arrested and charged with assault on lawful entry. He was released and is scheduled to appear in court February 27th. That's one of those things I don't understand. This is a person who ran naked, vaulted the fence into the Department of Department of uh, Department of Homeland Security. Well, I mean, luckily, pretty much nobody works there right now. <laughs> so it was probably an empty building, except for a couple of ad admins. Then he broke into NBC and bit somebody who worked there, and they're just like, "Okay, you all better come back here for your court date." You seem like you can be trusted. Yeah, yeah, we're fine with this. It, Do us a favor, wear pants to your court date. Also, th this is the what it, the, the story mentions. This is the third breach of security at the Department of Homeland's facility. Because nobody works there right now. In the past seven months. There's nobody there. Well, there were people there. There were people there until last month. So, yeah, there's kind of no excuse for that. It's really That's different. Thing. Like Homeland Security. It's apparently y'all just walk in there with naked, nobody do shit to you. Okay, here's the question that I've never asked. I don't think I've ever actually asked out loud about our naked crazy, but it's always in the back of my mind when we do this. Hmm. When dudes do the naked crazy, like... Are, are, don't you worry when you're just running around doing stuff naked that something will excite you? <laughs> because as I understand it, that can happen at random and inconvenient times. Like, man, this you is know what, what I wonder. Like, do you think you're worried about that? Is the guy you think the guy sitting around going, "Well, tonight I was planning to jump into the Department of Homeland Security naked, but what if I get a boner?" Maybe I should rethink. And the stories never tell you if they do. <laughs> and I'm really curious about that. Like, I'm convinced that at least 40% of these stories, the guy's at least at half mast. Because there's got to be something viscerally thrilling about running around crazy in the Walmart or something, you know? Like, and I have been told many times by many sources that random inconvenient boners are a thing. So like, I just wonder about that because that's not a problem. A woman would have running around naked. Like no. as, long as, we, as long as we schedule it properly, yeah. we're pretty good. You know, the worst we'd have to worry about is accidentally bleeding on some stuff, but that's just a matter of scheduling. You got to so, so your your complaint and the coverage is, but what about the boners? I feel like that's a detail I want to know. And I can't say why. I just, I wonder. Well, this next one. I've been holding that in for like how many years have I been doing this bit with you? God. <laughs> this next one is... I, I, I'm very careful on this show about doing stories where people get hurt. Yes. Um, especially if it's seriously injured, if people die, that's definitely, definitely a no-no. But when people do it to themselves, and it is so obviously stupid and potentially dangerous to others, I do have to make a point of calling them out on this. And this one, oh, Dan's going to be mad. I can uh -oh. already tell you Dan's going to be mad about this story. I can't see him through the pile of boxes. Usually I can see him. He's going to be mad. Um, do you remember when uh, Trump's, one of Trump's talking head people showed up on CNN? She had the the bullet necklace. Yeah. That's a thing people do. They make bullets into jewelry. And like Christmas wreaths. And I'm like, yeah, that's, that's what Jesus was born for. So you could shoot stuff. 
So this next guy was was attempting to make a bullet necklace. Oh no. Except and well, oh Grady. He's throwing stuff in his water dish again. <laughs> right when I'm doing Fuck you, it's gonna stay there. You just have to I, deal with it. I got I got greeted upstairs at like six in the morning when I finally stumbled into bed because I fell asleep watching Mad Max Fury Road with uh three little turdlets and a poop trail that Dottie had left on the bedroom floor. Because sometimes little doodlebug doesn't get all the dingleberries out. Well. Yeah. This is from uh, Oshawa, Ontario. Ontario man shoots himself while making necklace from bullet. I feel like you shouldn't, you should like, they shouldn't be lies. Ontario man is recovering from surgery after he shot himself in the leg while making a necklace out of a bullet. Durham Regional Police say... Was he, like, shooting from a gun onto a chain? Because I don't think that's how that... It's not technically shooting, no. Works. Durham Regional Police say 50-year-old Oshawa, Ontario man tried to pull apart a bullet with vice grips. They say the powder inside the bullet ignited, which caused an yep. explosion, propelled the bullet into the man's thigh. Oh, here he comes. Now listen, here's the there's the oh, great line. Don't, of the, don't show them your face. Here's the line of the story. Oh, it's too bad you changed your hoodie. Oh. <laughs> it's the line of the story. Police say the man told officers... Oh, I see your nipples. He was making a necklace and didn't realize the bullet could explode. I mean, there's, there's gunpowder in there. So, yeah. Do you know when they make those necklaces and jewelry out of bullets? Do you, do you know what they do? They take out the gunpowder, I imagine? No, they buy empty shells and empty bullets, and there's never been gunpowder involved in the entire process. That makes sense. Be because... Guys, can we not say Dan shot in this context? Like, I know you're just all throwing back... <laughs> <laughs> but... It's a bullet story, so, you know. You fucking idiot! There's an episode of the X-Files where Scully takes apart a bullet in order to use the gunpowder to build a fire because she and Mulder are stranded out in the woods overnight. Mm -hmm. And then she winds up singing Joy to the World by Three Dog Night to help Mulder get to sleep. But she makes a point of doing it very, very carefully so as not to blow them up because Scully's a fucking scientist and a boss. I just, I'm like, I love... How do you not realize the bullet could explode? How does that elude you? I mean, I don't have an intricate understanding of how bullets work. You would think someone making a necklace out of a bullet would be at least... I mean, that would seem to be someone who's a gun enthusiast. Right, they would understand that the, that, that the principle of the gun is an explosion happens inside a tube that propels a projectile. Yeah. It's not like, you know, magic. It's, 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 how do you do that? Not, not everyone who owns guns are tremendously smart. As we well know. Yeah. True. Yeah. You have a God-given right to a deadly weapon, even if you're a fucking moron. Yeah. America. Oh, oh he boy. Was, Earlier in the day, he was wearing his hoodie that says, I'm already taken by a smoking hot redhead. So I thought that'd be fun to get on camera, but he changed. Oh, boy. Oh, this is also from Canada. I, I don't understand how the hell this happened. Cause... Yeah, and I didn't think Canada were really gun people like we are. To be absolutely fair, there was no gun involved. True. Just True. an imbecile. This next one, it... Wow, okay. Oh, did my hippo fall? I guess he did. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not really sure I have a segue for this. There's just, there's no, you know what, there's no... Yes, well, I can talk about it a little bit. Did you do drama class in high school? Did I do what? Drama. Uh, no. I did um, the drama club in college. Drama teachers are, they're a special animal. 
not necessarily bad people, but they are definitely a special animal. Yeah. So you you expect a certain amount of weirdness. I had a college professor who was drama teacher. This is in the 90s. He was still dressing like it was the 70s. <laughs> like he had like the, the the stereotypical tweed professor 70s outfit. It was weird. Um so yeah, it's drama I give them a little bit of leeway for being a little eccentric. However, this too far. Teacher suspended after giving yeah, students about your dingleberries. Teacher suspended after giving students cooking instructions for crystal meth. Seems irresponsible. Ontario mother's outraged after her 13-year-old son was handed instructions for making and injecting crystal meth as part of a drama class assignment. Reported by the CBC, the incident took place at Aaron Mills Middle School. Okay, wow. It's not even high school. Um, I popped a blood vessel, said the boy's mother. I was in a state of shock. I'm thinking this cannot be real. According to Green Ridge Sun, the unnamed, eight, uh, unnamed grade 8 teacher printed out the instructions as part of an acting assignment and instructed the students, students to, quote, act scared when making the drug and to, quote, act happy when injecting it. You couldn't think of another way to teach kids how to play a gamut of emotions. You're taking the method shit just a wee bit too fucking far. Yeah, yeah. You're really was, he, was he hoping to, like, people a little meth factory with his students? Like, no, we're really going to pretend we're making meth. <laughs> and I just... In order to really immerse us in this scene, I've gotten all these vats of dangerous chemicals. Oh. You guys should wear these suits. Mm -mm. Oh, so I, I just got it. He put put the meth in method. <laughs> yeah, that happened. I, I, good God. What the fuck were you thinking? That's, uh, what were you thinking? He, I'm, like, I'm pretty sure this guy is is so far out there. He's thinking... This is a reasonable idea. It's for art. This is not a reasonable idea at all. Where did you get <laughs> printable directions on making and injecting meth? The internet. Can you Google that? You can Google it. Huh. Tara, if there is any horrible thing that can be made or done, I know, I guess I just don't think about Googling, how do I make meth? It's never occurred to me to Google something like that, so I forget, I suppose, that you could. You could, in fact, Google, how do I make meth, and you will get results. <laughs> Grady's like, yeah, I've done it. What is it? You don't, you don't even know the fucking kingdom I'm, I'm holding down. What is it? Are you a meth dealer, Grady? I am. You big fuzzy white meth dealer. Yeah. My nervous persona is is all a lie. No, he's sampling the product. That's the problem. <laughs> he's tweaking it. out. Never sample the product, Grady. Never sample the product. Ah, oh, all right. Quality control, man. Here is another case of, yeah, why does this... <laughs> Grady, please. Grady, Grady, please. This is my tail. Look at my butt. Grady, please. Hi. Grady, please. Hi, look at my butt. Please, Grady. Grady, please. Everybody on the internet, look at my butt. Grady, please. <laughs> He's just happily purring right now. I love your cat. Big white doofus. Um, I can hear my girls wandering around. I hear their little bells. I don't know where they are. What is it? Planning their uprising. What is it? Doing the show, man. Doing the show. Okay. Well, you you sit there, and you you do you, buddy. Um. <laughs> but this is another one of the why the fuck does this keep happening? Although we sort of have an answer in this one. 
I don't get parkour. I mean, I've never been totally sure what parkour is. Is it just jumping on buildings? It's it, 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 well, that was loud. Um, it's this uh, idea of trying to get from one point to another in the fastest possible route. Oh, I thought it was like a weird fighting style. No, it's it's trying to make use of your environment along the way. You remember Casino Royale, the opening of the Casino the Chase? Yeah. That dude jumping all over the shit and getting to the boom and doing all the... That's parkour. Oh. Okay. Yeah. Um. So... There is a reason. However... There were, there's a t time and a place, time and, and, and this was not the place. This was not oh, the it's place. time to beat up the green screen, I see. Parkour mishap leaves tall, thin man stuck in a downtown Denver chimney. Oh, no. Dustin Hinkle told cops he dropped into the abandoned incinerator chimney from a balcony above. Look at his face. His face is all jacked up. He at least know what he did. That is the face of a man who know what he did. Why would he... What, was that on purpose? 26-year-old man was rescued, after getting, was rescued after getting stuck in a downtown Denver chimney on Thursday. Dustin Hinkle was booked into jail on suspicion of trespass after firefighters freed him from the chimney in a tall building. Two others were also arrested, accused of trespassing took Cruz about two hours to free Hinkle from where he was stuck in the chimney in a vacant apartment. He fell between 30 and 35 feet down the old incinerator <gasps> chimney. Oh my God. According to police spokeswoman, uh, Christine Downs said Hinkle told investigators he had been practicing parkour when he became stuck. I mean... Maybe you should practice your parkour somewhere not actually dangerous until you're really good at it. I I just you silly shit. And yeah, that is this is one of those things where you don't want to you want to ease into it. You don't want to just uh, there's enough no, just start jumping around off of buildings. <laughs> That's like advanced level. You maybe want to start, maybe set up something in your back, put a few garbage cans in your backyard yeah. and like jump over them a few times. Work your way into it. Don't just be like on the first day, pull the Spider-Man shit. You are not Neo. Yeah. And Neo didn't make it either. Yeah, the first time Neo did it, he didn't do it. No. And then at the end, he could fly. And guess what? You're not going to be able to do that either. No. That's That's not going to happen. Thirty to thirty-five feet inside a chimney. Like, think about that. That's bouncing around inside brick for thirty feet. That sounds so painful. Although, in this case, that probably actually saved his life because it slowed his momentum. Yeah. Yeah. Had he missed the chimney, he'd be dead. Well, depending. If he went head first, maybe. But if yeah. he went, he'd probably have shattered legs. But yeah, that, but yeah you could survive a 30-foot drop if you don't land directly on your head. You'd be fucked up. But, oh, good God. But don't do that. And then you're stuck two hours like the fucking, like some fucking asshole in an Edgar Allan Poe story. <laughs> Castle of Monte Don't, yeah, do you, the parkour, it's cool. You've seen the internet videos, but do you know how, how long people practiced for that shit? You gotta work up to it. Oh, this next one pissed me off. This story pissed me off. And again, this is a story where people got hurt, but they did it to themselves. Nobody died, and they made it worse. These assholes. These fucking... Okay. Hunting, however you feel about it, is something you have to do carefully when you're in a group. Because you are pointing guns. Yeah. 
and it is you have to be responsible doing this shit. I know there are lots of responsible hunters out there, and however I feel about hunting, I appreciate that you take your time to be responsible and to think about what you're doing. These guys did not, and fuck them so hard. Fuck them all of the so hard. Hunters charged in Texas shooting had blamed immigrants. <laughs> oh, fuck you. Two hunters accused in a shooting in a remote Texas ranch near the Mexican border told authorities they were attacked by an immigrant who had entered the country illegally. Which Trump kid was it? Police responded to a call about a shooting on a ranch uh, and found... Um, what's the first guy's first name? Uh, Walker, Walker Darty uh, and another man in the hunting party, Edwin Roberts, with gunshot wounds. And were part of a group that were told that uh, of hunters and told authorities they were attacked by people who had legally crossed near the border and tried to steal an RV. Investigating investigation found that Daughtry shot Roberts and Bryant shot Daughtry. So what happened was they were hunting, they were fucking around, they were not being careful, and not just one person got shot. But two people in the same party were shot. And then, after that, instead of... Because, you know what? It's illegal to shoot somebody else. You're going to be in trouble. Unless you're Dick Cheney and they apologize to you, yes. You're going to be in trouble. So, realizing, oh shit, we're going to be in trouble, they invented an imaginary brown person and blamed it on them. And this is not uncommon. This is a real life fucking trope. Asshole people doing things and then inventing a brown person. That chick that drowned all her kids in the minivan, didn't she say some Charlie, black guy came along and did Carolina? it? Yeah. yeah. Something like that. It's you 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 invented you invented a brown person because you were irresponsible shithead. Holes. And you know what's really what's really getting me here is not just one person was shot during this, but two people. Now, one person in a hunting party getting shot on accident, just a regular, we took all the precautions and still a fuck up happened. I can see that. But two people. Yeah. Y'all was fucking around. Y'all did not respect your guns. I honestly kind of wonder how it doesn't happen more since they go out in all camo. Well, they're supposed to have at least reflective s strips on them. You're supposed to dress a certain way when you're going out with other people. But even... So that you don't get shot. Even regardless. Two people in the same honey party getting shot. Y'all was fucking around. Yeah. yeah. It's not, the guns are not a toy. It's not a toy. And this, you are even in the circumstance where you could justify the use of a firearm for what you were doing, and you still fucked it up. So these are now people who should no longer be able to have Oh, no. They, they, they get to keep their guns. But they will. They'll get to keep guns because, you know, America... Even though they have, like, if you did this with a car, you would lose your license. You would no longer be allowed to drive a yeah. car. Oh, boy. Our last one tonight. It's I mean, it's also Texas. So I think unless you're in Austin by law in Texas, I think you have to own, like, three rifles or something. Our last one is Florida and... That's tweets. Our last one is Florida, and this is this is a whole bunch of go big or go home. Because this guy... He had a big idea. This is, he had a big plan. He had a big plan. He had, had what he thought was a brilliant scheme. Machiavellian, if you will. Machiavellian. He had like some super villain ambition. Machiavellian would be, because I think Machiavelli is a rapper. So yeah. I don't know what kind of scheme that would be exactly. Yeah. But it sounds interesting. This guy had some like Lex Luthor style ambitions going on here. Remember? 
Remember back in the original Superman movie where Lex Luthor planned to set off nuclear bombs to make lakefront property in, in California? Um, I haven't seen that one, but I'll say yes. You haven't seen the Richard Donner Superman? Brilliant movie. I'm not. Crazy as shit, but it's a brilliant movie. This is that kind of scheme, only this guy is not Lex Luthor. Florida man arrested in plot to get rich by bombing Target stores. Oh, I saw this. Mark Bennett thought he had, had uh, he thought was a great get rich quick scheme involving homemade bombs, Target superstores, and well-timed trades on the, star, on the stock market. Did not go according to plan. Barnett, a 48-year-old from Ocala, Florida, accused of possession of a destructive device affecting commerce. That's a charge? Apparently. Is, does the affecting commerce part make it better or worse? I don't know. Like, is that a lesser charge or a worse charge? Barnett allegedly built 10 explosive devices and disguised them, disguised them as food item boxes, delivered the, those boxes to an unnamed person to place in Target stores along the East Coast. The plan, Barnett told that person, was to set off the bombs in the Target stores in Florida, Virginia, and New York, sending the company's stock value down. Barnett would then buy Target stock, cheap, stock cheaply and sit and wait as the stock rebounded, which he referred to as, quote, easy money. But that person instead presented the bombs to a probation officer, who then took them to law enforcement officials, Barnett was arrested Tuesday. How is, how does domestic terrorism qualify as easy money? <laughs> like, what was easy about this? You had to build 10 bombs, which is not an easy or particularly safe thing to do. No. You had to make a plan, like, you're a fucking domestic terrorist. There were probably easier ways to make money. Because yeah. you probably had to buy all those bomb-making materials. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm confident there were easier ways to make some money. And, and the fact that his accomplice, he picked someone who was already on probation. Yeah. To be his, the dude. And the dude's on probation is looking like, well, I can go along with, with you know goofball's idea here or i could not go back to jail that's a tough call that's a tough call yeah also even worse dude you're doing the whole thing wrong you don't buy the deflated stock you short the stock clearly he's not bright enough that's how you make money doing you short a stock you bet against the stock. Alternately, you could just find a company that's already doing poorly. And buy their stock. And buy their stock and wait for it to rebound. Yeah. Just wait for Trump to tweet something. Yeah. Instead of, that again, becoming a domestic terrorist. Because that is what you are. I, that, and to do it for money. Yeah, this is some diehard shit. Only not very well executed. Because, like, the plot of every diehard movie is a bunch of white dude terrorists who turn out to just be thieves. And I don't know how they keep making movies with that same plot. Why do we have such shit villains in real life, Tara? Because we also don't have the Avengers. Because, you know, I could have... So like, if we had really good villains, we'd be fucked. I, I, I could respect if we had, like, a Lex Luthor type. I could right, respect. But we don't have Superman to stop him. I could respect if, if we had, like, you the know. The best level of villain we can handle. A Norman Osborn type Superman. Arch Fulius. Like. But what do we get? We get, we get the fucking. We, we get, I mean, we do have Putin, who's a real life Bond villain. He's. Yeah, but he's not very... So he, everyone knows. The real Bond villains, nobody even knew their name. That was... They were so... They, they, they kept their hands off of it. That's how they stayed out of... Out, this is like 
wacky races kind of villains. Remember Hanna Barbera wacky races cartoon? This is the kind of villains we got. It's like Baron Von Greenback from Danger Mouse. Yes, that's the shit we got. I'm disappointed. I mean, I feel insulted by this shit. I'm just saying, if we had that class of villain without the class of hero that it requires to stop them, we would be proper fucked. Oh, well, uh, if Die Hard taught us anything, all we need is just an off-duty cop who, with a drinking problem, we'll all be fine. Nash, we've covered stories about <laughs> drinking problems. Do they go the Bruce Willis way? They do, <laughs> they do not. Oh. And also, if if any off-duty cop with a slight drinking problem did even a third of the things Bruce Willis does in those movies, he'd spend the rest of his life in jail. So, we uh, we we've. We, the first thing we learned this week is domestic terrorism is not the path to easy stock market money. Fuck, dude. How, did, how do you go through... I mean, this... going through Sell all fake shit on eBay. Going through all those steps and thinking each step along the way, this is a great idea. Never, this is easy. We've learned that you better if you're going to use a firearm, even for its intended purpose, you take you treat that shit responsi responsibly. And if you fuck up, don't invent a brown person to blame it on. No. We've, We've learned that journalism is failing us by not telling us if crazy naked dudes get boners. And also the Department of Homeland Security is not very secure itself. Not terribly secure. We've That's learned. Comforting. We've learned if you're going to do parkour, you got to work up to that shit. Start on level one. Don't go straight to level ten. We've learned that kids do not need all that a whole lot of background for to learn to act in your school play. No. You can scale it back a bit. You don't have to tell them how to shoot the drugs. Mm -mm. Or make the drugs. I mean, they're in junior high. They probably already know. And finally, we've learned that live ammunition is, not, is dangerous. Yeah, it does not make good jewelry. Live ammunition, not good jewelry. What the fuck? I don't understand bullet jewelry anyway. When we were at Pearl Harbor in Hawaii, like, you could buy all this jewelry made out of bullets and shells. And I'm like, why? How was your trip to Hawaii? Great. I got this I got I got this nice necklace of shells. Oh, like off the beach? No, out of a fucking machine gun. Why? <laughs> it's you know, I mean, it's one of those things bullet shells. Technically that's garbage. You can recycle them, but technically a used bullet shell is a garbage used garbage that was used to kill somebody maybe. It's so you're you're pretty much you're stringing it's, it's death garbage you're you're <laughs> death garbage yeah. this is my death garbage isn't it lovely why 